Cancer Immunotherapy, Wikipedia article audio. Cancer immunotherapy is the use of the immune system to treat cancer. Immunotherapies can be categorized as active, passive or hybrid. These approaches exploit the fact that cancer cells often have molecules on their surface that can be detected by the immune system, known as two more associated antigens, they are often proteins or other macromolecules. Active immunotherapy directs the immune system to attack tumor cells by targeting TOS. Passive immunotherapies enhance existing anti-tumor responses and include the use of monoclonal antibodies, lymphocytes, and cytokines. Among these, multiple antibody therapies are approved in various jurisdictions to treat a wide range of cancers. Antibodies are proteins produced by the immune system that bind to a target antigen on the cell surface. The immune system normally uses them to fight pathogens. Each antibody is specific to one or a few proteins. Those that bind to tumor antigens treat cancer. Cell surface receptors are common targets for antibody therapies and include CD20, CD274, and CD279. Once bound to a cancer antigen, Antibodies can induce antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, activate the complement system, or prevent a receptor from interacting with its ligand, all of which can lead to cell death. Approved antibodies include alemtuzumab, ipilimumab, nivolumab, ofatumumab, and rituximab. Cellular Immunotherapy Dendritic Cell Therapy Active cellular therapies usually involve the removal of immune cells from the blood or from a tumor. Those specific for the tumor are cultured and returned to the patient where they attack the tumor. Alternatively, immune cells can be genetically engineered to express a tumor specific receptor, cultured and returned to the patient. Cell types that can be used in this way are natural killer cells lymphokine-activated killer cells, cytotoxic T-cells and dendritic cells. Interleukin-2 and interferon-alpha are cytokines, proteins that regulate and coordinate the behavior of the immune system. They have the ability to enhance anti-tumor activity and thus can be used as passive cancer treatments. Interferon alpha is used in the treatment of hairy cell leukemia. AIDS-related Kaposi's sarcoma, follicular lymphoma, chronic myeloid leukemia and malignant melanoma. Interleukin-2 is used in the treatment of malignant melanoma and renal cell carcinoma. Dendritic cell therapy provokes anti-tumor responses by causing dendritic cells to present tumor antigens to lymphocytes, which activates them priming them to kill other cells that present the antigen. Dendritic cells are antigen-presenting cells in the mammalian immune system. In cancer treatment they aid cancer antigen targeting. The only approved cellular cancer therapy based on dendritic cells is Cipulocele T. One method of inducing dendritic cells to present tumor antigens is by vaccination with autologous tumor lysates or short peptides. These peptides are often given in combination with adjuvants to increase the immune and anti-tumor responses. Other adjuvants include proteins or other chemicals that attract and slash or activate dendritic cells, such as granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. Dendritic cells can also be activated in vivo by making two more cells express GMCSF. This can be achieved by either genetically engineering tumor cells to produce GMCSF or by infecting tumor cells with an oncolytic virus that expresses GMCSF. Approved Drugs Another strategy is to remove dendritic cells from the blood of a patient and activate them outside the body. The dendritic cells are activated in the presence of tumor antigens, 
which may be a single tumor-specific peptide slash protein or a tumor cell lysate. These cells are infused and provoke an immune response. Dendritic cell therapies include the use of antibodies that bind to receptors on the surface of dendritic cells. Antigens can be added to the antibody and can induce the dendritic cells to mature and provide immunity to the tumor. Dendritic cell receptors such as TLR3, TLR7, TLR8, or CD40 have been used as antibody targets. CART Cell Therapy Cipulocele T was approved for treatment of asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic metastatic castration-resistant prostate cancer in 2010. The treatment consists of removal of antigen-presenting cells from blood by leukapheresis and growing them with the fusion protein PA2024 made from GMCSF and prostate-specific prostatic acid phosphatase and rain-fused. This process is repeated three times. Tisagenal cletucel, a chimeric antigen receptor therapy, was approved by FDA in 2017 to treat acute lymphoblastic leukemia. This treatment removes CD19 positive cells from the body. Axicaptagene silylocele is another CART therapeutic approved in 2017 for treatment of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Approved Drugs 2 Antibodies are a key component of the adaptive immune response, playing a central role in both recognizing foreign antigens and stimulating an immune response. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins produced by some B-cells and are composed of two regions, an antigen binding fragment, which binds to antigens, and a fragment crystallizable region, which interacts with so called FC receptors that are expressed on the surface of different immune cell types, including macrophages, neutrophils, and NK cells. Many immunotherapeutic regimens involve antibodies. Monoclonal antibody technology engineers and generates antibodies against specific antigens, such as those present on tumor surfaces. Antibody therapy Two types are used in cancer treatments. Antibody types FC's ability to bind FC receptors is important because it allows antibodies to activate the immune system. FC regions are varied, they exist in numerous subtypes and can be further modified, for example with the addition of sugars in a process called glycosylation. Changes in the FC region can alter an antibody's ability to engage FC receptors and, by extension, will determine the type of immune response that the antibody triggers. Many cancer immunotherapy drugs including PD-1 and PD-L1 inhibitors, are antibodies. For example, immune checkpoint blockers targeting PD-1 are antibodies designed to bind PD-1 expressed by T cells and reactivate these cells to eliminate tumors. Anti-PD-1 drugs contain not only an FAB region that binds PD-1 but also an FC region. Experimental work indicates that the FC portion of cancer immunotherapy drugs can affect the outcome of treatment. For example, anti-PD-1 drugs with FC regions that bind inhibitory FC receptors can have decreased therapeutic efficacy. Imaging studies have further shown that the FC region of anti-PD-1 drugs can bind FC receptors expressed by tumor-associated macrophages. This process removes the drugs from their intended targets and limits therapeutic efficacy. Furthermore, antibodies targeting the CO stimulatory protein CD40 require engagement with selective FC receptors for optimal therapeutic efficacy. Together, these studies underscore the importance of FC status in antibody based immune checkpoint targeting strategies. Antibodies are also referred to as murine, 
chimeric, humanized and human. Murine antibodies are from a different species and carry a risk of immune reaction. Chimeric antibodies attempt to reduce murine antibodies' immunogenicity by replacing part of the antibody with the corresponding human counterpart, known as the constant region. Humanized antibodies are almost completely human, only the complementarity determining regions of the variable regions are derived from murine sources. Human antibodies have completely human DNA. Conjugation Antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity requires antibodies to bind to target cell surfaces. Antibodies are formed of a binding region and the FC region that can be detected by immune system cells via their FC surface receptors. FC receptors are found on many immune system cells, including natural killer cells. When natural killer cells encounter antibody-coated cells, the latter's FC regions interact with their FC receptors, releasing perforin and granzyme B to kill the tumor cell. Examples include rituximab, ofatumumab, and alemtuzumab. Antibodies under development have altered FC regions that have higher affinity for a specific type of FC receptor, FCRIEEA, which can dramatically increase effectiveness. The complement system includes blood proteins that can cause cell death after an antibody binds to the cell surface. Generally the system deals with foreign pathogens, but can be activated with therapeutic antibodies in cancer. The system can be triggered if the antibody is chimeric, humanized or human, as long as it contains the IgG1 FC region. Complement can lead to cell death by activation of the membrane attack complex, known as complement-dependent cytotoxicity, enhancement of antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity, and CR3-dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Complement-dependent cytotoxicity occurs when antibodies bind to the cancer cell surface. The C1 complex binds to these antibodies and subsequently protein pores are formed in the cancer cell membrane. Alemtuzumab is an anti-CD5-2 humanized IgG1 monoclonal antibody indicated for the treatment of fludarabine refractory chronic lymphocytic leukemia, cutaneous T-cell lymphoma, peripheral T-cell lymphoma and T-cell prolymphocytic leukemia. CD52 is found on 95% of peripheral blood lymphocytes and monocytes, but its function in lymphocytes is unknown. It binds to CD52 and initiates its cytotoxic effect by complement fixation and ADCC mechanisms. Due to the antibody target common complications of alemtuzumab therapy are infection, toxicity, and myelosuppression. Durvalumab Durvalumab is a human immunoglobulin G1 kappa monoclonal antibody that blocks the interaction of programmed cell death ligand 1 with the PD1 and CD80 molecules. Durvalumab is approved for the treatment of patients with locally advanced or metastatic urothelial carcinoma who FC regions Ipilimumab is a human IgG1 antibody that binds the surface protein CTLA4. In normal physiology T-cells are activated by two signals, the T-cell receptor binding to an antigen, MHC complex and T-cell surface receptor CD28 binding to CD80 or CD86 proteins. CTLA4 binds to CD80 or CD86 preventing the binding of CD28 to these surface proteins and therefore negatively regulates the activation of T-cells. Human-slash-non-human balance Active cytotoxic T-cells are required for the immune system to attack melanoma cells. Normally inhibited active melanoma-specific cytotoxic T-cells can produce an effective anti-tumor response. 
Ipilimumab can cause a shift in the ratio of regulatory T cells to cytotoxic T cells to increase the anti tumor response. Regulatory T cells inhibit other T cells, which may benefit the tumor. Naked monoclonal antibodies are antibodies without added elements. Most antibody therapies use this antibody type. Conjugated monoclonal antibodies are joined to another molecule, which is either cytotoxic or radioactive. The toxic chemicals are those typically used as chemotherapy drugs, but other toxins can be used. The antibody binds to specific antigens on cancer cell surfaces, directing the therapy to the tumor. Radioactive compound-linked antibodies are referred to as radio-labeled. Chemo-labeled or immunotoxins antibodies are tagged with chemotherapeutic molecules or toxins, respectively. Ofatumumab is a second-generation human IgG1 antibody that binds to CD20. It is used in the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia because the cancerous cells of CLL are usually CD20 expressing B cells. Unlike rituximab, which binds to a large loop of the CD20 protein, ofatumumab binds to a separate, small loop. This may explain their different characteristics. Compared to rituximab, Ofatumumab induces complement-dependent cytotoxicity at a lower dose with less immunogenicity. Pembrolizumab is approved for the first-line treatment of patients with metastatic non-small cell lung cancer whose tumors have high PD-L1 expression as determined by an FDA-approved test. Have disease progression during or following platinum-containing chemotherapy have disease progression within 12 months of neoadjuvant or adjuvant treatment with platinum-containing chemotherapy. Rituximab is a chimeric monoclonal IgG1 antibody specific for CD20, developed from its parent antibody ibrutumumab. As with ibrutumumab, rituximab targets CD20, making it effective in treating certain B-cell malignancies. These include aggressive and indolent lymphomas such as diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma and leukemias such as B-cell chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Although the function of CD20 is relatively unknown, CD20 may be a calcium channel involved in B-cell activation. The antibody's mode of action is primarily through the induction of ADCC and complement-mediated cytotoxicity. Other mechanisms include apoptosis and cellular growth arrest. Rituximab also increases the sensitivity of cancerous B cells to chemotherapy. Cell death mechanisms Antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity Complement FDA-approved antibodies Cytokines are proteins produced by many types of cells present within a tumor. They can modulate immune responses. The tumor often employs them to allow it to grow and reduce the immune response. These immune-modulating effects allow them to be used as drugs to provoke an immune response. Two commonly used cytokines are interferons and interleukins. Interferons are produced by the immune system. They are usually involved in antiviral response, but also have use for cancer. They fall in three groups, type I, type II and type III. IFN has been approved for use in hairy cell leukemia, AIDS-related Kaposi's sarcoma, follicular lymphoma, chronic myeloid leukemia and melanoma. Type I and 2I FNs have been researched extensively and although both types promote anti-tumor immune system effects, only type I I FNs have been shown to be clinically effective. If shows promise for its anti-tumor effects in animal models. Unlike type I I FNs, 
interferon gamma is not approved yet for the treatment of any cancer. However, Improved survival was observed when interferon gamma was administrated to patients with bladder carcinoma and melanoma cancers. The most promising result was achieved in patients with stage 2 and 3 of ovarian carcinoma. The in vitro study of IFN gamma in cancer cells is more extensive and results indicate anti proliferative activity of IFN gamma leading to the growth inhibition or cell death generally induced by apoptosis but sometimes by autophagy. Interleukins have an array of immune system effects. Interleukin-2 is used in the treatment of malignant melanoma and renal cell carcinoma. In normal physiology it promotes both effector T cells and T regulatory cells, but its exact mechanism of action is unknown. Combining various immunotherapies such as PD-1 and CTLA-4 inhibitors can enhance anti-tumor response leading to durable responses. Combining ablation therapy of tumors with immunotherapy enhances the immunostimulating response and has synergistic effects for curative metastatic cancer treatment. Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare approved the use of polysaccharide K extracted from the mushroom, Coriolus versicolor, in the 1980s, to stimulate the immune systems of patients undergoing chemotherapy. It is a dietary supplement in the U.S. and other jurisdictions. Alemtuzumab Adoptive T-cell therapy is a form of passive immunization by the transfusion of T-cells. They are found in blood and tissue and usually activate when they find foreign pathogens. Specifically they activate when the T-cell's surface receptors encounter cells that display parts of foreign proteins on their surface antigens. These can be either infected cells, or antigen-presenting cells. They are found in normal tissue and in tumor tissue, where they are known as tumor-infiltrating lymphocytes. They are activated by the presence of APCs such as dendritic cells that present tumor antigens. Although these cells can attack the tumor, the environment within the tumor is highly immunosuppressive, preventing immune-mediated tumor death. Multiple ways of producing and obtaining two more targeted T-cells have been developed. T-cells specific to a tumor antigen can be removed from a tumor sample or filtered from blood. Subsequent activation and culturing is performed ex vivo, with the results rain-fused. Activation can take place through gene therapy, or by exposing the T-cells to tumor antigens. As of 2014, multiple ACT clinical trials were underway. Atezolizumab Ipilimumab Nivolumab The first two adoptive T-cell therapies, Tisagenlacletucel and Axicaptagene Silalocele, were approved by the FDA in 2017. Another approach is adoptive transfer of haploidentical gamma-delta T-cells or NK cells from a healthy donor. The major advantage of this approach is that these cells do not cause GVHD. The disadvantage is frequently impaired function of the transferred cells. Some tumor cells overexpress CD47 to escape recognition by the mechanism of host's immune system and as of 2017, this was an emerging target for cancer immunotherapeutics. Carbohydrate antigens on the surface of cells can be used as targets for immunotherapy. GD2 is a gangliocide found on the surface of many types of cancer cell including neuroblastoma, retinoblastoma, melanoma, small cell lung cancer, brain tumors, osteosarcoma, rhabdomyosarcoma, Ewing's sarcoma, liposarcoma, fibrosarcoma, leiomyosarcoma, and other soft tissue sarcomas. It is not usually expressed on the surface of normal tissues, 
making it a good target for immunotherapy. As of 2014, clinical trials were underway. Immune checkpoints affect immune system function. Immune checkpoints can be stimulatory or inhibitory. Tumors can use these checkpoints to protect themselves from immune system attacks. Currently approved checkpoint therapies block inhibitory checkpoint receptors. Blockade of negative feedback signaling to immune cells thus results in an enhanced immune response against tumors. Ofatumumab One ligand receptor interaction under investigation is the interaction between the transmembrane programmed cell death 1 protein and its ligand, PD1 ligand 1. PDL1 on the cell surface binds to PD1 on an immune cell surface, which inhibits immune cell activity. Among PDL1 functions is a key regulatory role on T cell activities. It appears that upregulation of PDL1 on the cell surface may inhibit T cells that might otherwise attack. PDL1 on cancer cells also inhibits FOS and interferon dependent apoptosis, protecting cells from cytotoxic molecules produced by T cells. Antibodies that bind to either PD1 or PDL1 and therefore block the interaction may allow the T cells to attack the tumor. The first checkpoint antibody approved by the FDA was ipilimumab, approved in 2011 for treatment of melanoma. It blocks the immune checkpoint molecule CTLA-4. Clinical trials have also shown some benefits of anti-CTLA-4 therapy on lung cancer or pancreatic cancer, specifically in combination with other drugs. In ongoing trials the combination of CTLA-4 blockade with PD-1 or PD-L1 inhibitors is tested on different types of cancer. However, patients treated with checkpoint blockade, or a combination of checkpoint blocking antibodies, are at high risk of suffering from immune-related adverse events such as dermatologic, gastrointestinal, endocrine, or hepatic autoimmune reactions. These are most likely due to the breadth of the induced T-cell activation when anti-CTLA-4 antibodies are administered by injection in the bloodstream. Using a mouse model of bladder cancer, researchers have found that a local injection of a low-dose anti-CTLA-4 in the tumor area had the same tumor-inhibiting capacity as when the antibody was delivered in the blood. At the same time the levels of circulating antibodies were lower, suggesting that local administration of the anti-CTLA-4 therapy might result in fewer adverse events. Initial clinical trial results with IgG4 PD-1 antibody nivolumab were published in 2010. It was approved in 2014. Nivolumab is approved to treat melanoma, lung cancer, kidney cancer, bladder cancer, head and neck cancer, and Hodgkin's lymphoma. A 2016 clinical trial for non-small cell lung cancer failed to meet its primary endpoint for treatment in the first-line setting, but is FDA approved in subsequent lines of therapy. Pembrolizumab is another PD-1 inhibitor that was approved by the FDA in 2014. Kate Ruta is approved to treat melanoma and lung cancer. Antibody BGBA317 is a PD-1 inhibitor in early clinical trials. In May 2016, PD-L1 inhibitor atezolizumab was approved for treating bladder cancer. Anti-PD-L1 antibodies currently in development include avelumab and durvalumab, in addition to an ephemer biotherapeutic. Other modes of enhancing immunotherapy include targeting so-called intrinsic checkpoint blockades e.g. CISH. Pembrolizumab Rituximab an oncolytic virus is a virus that preferentially infects and kills cancer cells. 
As the infected cancer cells are destroyed by oncolysis, they release new infectious virus particles or virions to help destroy the remaining tumor. Oncolytic viruses are thought not only to cause direct destruction of the tumor cells, but also to stimulate host anti-tumor immune responses for long-term immunotherapy. The potential of viruses as anti-cancer agents was first realized in the early 20th century, although coordinated research efforts did not begin until the 1960s. A number of viruses including adenovirus, rheovirus, measles, herpes simplex, Newcastle disease virus and vaccinia have now been clinically tested as oncolytic agents. TVEC is the first FDA-approved oncolytic virus for the treatment of melanoma. A number of other oncolytic viruses are in Phase 2-3 development. Cytokine therapy Certain compounds found in mushrooms, primarily polysaccharide S, can upregulate the immune system and may have anti-cancer properties. For example, beta-glucans such as lentinin have been shown in laboratory studies to stimulate macrophage, NK cells, T cells, and immune system cytokines and have been investigated in clinical trials as immunologic adjuvant S. Interferon Interleukin Combination Immunotherapy Polysaccharide K Research Adoptive T-cell Therapy Anti-CD47 Therapy Anti-GD2 Antibodies Immune Checkpoints CTLA-4 Blockade PD-1 Inhibitors PDL1 inhibitors. Other Oncolytic virus. Many tumors express mutations. These mutations potentially create new targetable antigens for use in T cell immunotherapy. The presence of CD8 plus T cells in cancer lesions, as identified using RNA sequencing data is higher in tumors with a high mutational burden. The level of transcripts associated with cytolytic activity of natural killer cells and T cells positively correlates with mutational load in many human tumors. In non-small cell lung cancer patients treated with lambrolizumab, mutational load shows a strong correlation with clinical response. In melanoma patients treated with ipilimumab, long-term benefit is also associated with a higher mutational load, although less significantly. The predicted MHC binding neoantigens in patients with a long-term clinical benefit were enriched for a series of tetrapeptide motifs that were not found in tumors of patients with no OR minimal clinical benefit. However, Human neoantigens identified in other studies do not show the bias toward tetrapeptide signatures. Polysaccharides Neoantigens